So my beautiful people, I am back with another Elden Ring video and today guys I'm going to teach you how to cheese and exploit the final boss in the Elden Beast. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leave me a like, it really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so this, this cheese, this exploit, it's obviously two phases. The first phase, phase one, we exploit the crap out of the boss to a point where the boss can't move, it's stuck in place and you don't even get hit. Phase two is a little bit more difficult. You will have to obviously do a lot of ducking and diving, wheeling and dealing, dodging out of the way, you know what I mean? But once you get used to the actual, the mechanics of the boss, it's not hard whatsoever. But we still have this beauty, which we can use paired with our mimic doing the same thing, which absolutely obliterates the boss. And it, it, it's basically a cheese on it. But yeah, this strat requires obviously a few things. But everything I've already made a guide on already and you'll find them all linked down below within the video description but we'll talk about what's needed so firstly mimic tier summon get this guys if you haven't got it what are you doing at this stage of the game yet and you haven't got the mimic tier go get it level it up as much as you can simple as that 100 100 mos guys weapons we need a high level primer which you can put an ash of war on doesn't really matter what it is as long as you can put an ash of war on it Think more so about your Mimic as well, because your Mimic will probably be in getting hits on the boss on Phase 2, because we don't actually bring out the Mimic until Phase 2. Phase 1's not needed. So yeah, any decent weapon you can put an Ash of War on. The Ash of War we need is the Hawthrost Stump, like I said, this bad boy right here. Guide to this, insane against uh, bosses. Uh, you'll find it linked down below within the video description. And um, we also need a staff to cast a few spells. Any staff will do. I've got a guide on this one right here that has a Glintstone staff. Get this thing, level it up, guys. Simple as that. Now, there's no excuse why you shouldn't have your weapons leveled up. I mean, at this stage of the game, get them up. I've got, I'll put two guides in the video description. We can get unlimited Samba and Smithing Stones. Level these bad boys up, guys. Simple. Now we need decent armor. Tank armor preferably, but you want to keep your load at a medium. You don't want it heavy. Uh, so yes, and think about your yeah, mimic here as well. We want obviously within phase two, the mimic is going to be hopefully the uh, the sponge, the target for the boss, taking the boss's aggro or standing behind it most of the time, stamping on it. Now there will be a phase or a certain instance within phase two where you have to dodge the boss's attacks. I mean, you, the boss's health is just ridiculous. You just can't do enough damage. So yes, tank armor, hundred percent. In regards to talismans. I've just got ones that help with health and a bit of focus points. Focus points ain't really needed though. So the more you have on health, it doesn't really matter. These are what I used. I've already beat the boss, but these are what I used. Weren't really thinking about them to be honest. Probably noobish on my behalf, but either way. Now with this, with the uh, the staff, we need a spell. A couple of spells preferably, but one mainly, and that is the Comet Azur. Now what you will see is, and it's actually the phase one exploit. We don't use this in phase two. But when we start the fight, when we go into phase one, you'll see we'll get cut scene. And after that, you want to run to the boss's left hand side. It'll be your right hand side, boss's left hand side. If you get there quick enough, that's why we need medium load, not heavy load. The boss will freeze in place. Now, if you stand next to her, she doesn't react. You can just lay down damage and she doesn't react. But you need to lay down super fast damage. Now, I've seen people use um, where are we? I've seen people use... Where's it gone? That right, that right there. I've seen people use this, the Carrion Slicer. But for me, I could get it down, but it just ain't efficient enough. I want something more efficient. The Comet Azur is absolutely brutal at doing this. Now, I did figure out that a lot of attacks where you don't move off the spot, so let's say, for instance, you're standing on the spot, there's no real animation to it, you don't jump forward or jump backwards, the boss doesn't react. But them, them, them ones like this here, the Loretta's Mastery, I tried this, I tried the uh, his Dark Moon, the boss moves straight away. But yeah, the Comet Azur is by far the best for this, but that does require a ton of intelligence. So if you haven't got a 60 intelligence, you probably won't be able to do, uh, do it with this. So you will have to find other means. But like I said, a lot of these, well, like I said, a Korean slicer, I'll actually link a guide in the video description where a guy uses this in phase one. It works perfectly for him. Like I could get it down, but it just wasn't efficient enough for me to put it in a guide. But hey, here, if you got it, try it out. It may work for you. And I, oh, the other thing as well is the Terra Magicus, which we just dropped down before we use the Comet as a 
in phase one ain't necessary but yes either way it just adds like a 30 or 35 percent extra damage bonus so it's pretty good either way these as well guys uh, both guys will be linked within the video description but yeah other than that guys that is more or less it i believe there's nothing else um again as long as you got the tank armor or good armor for your mimic to sponge decent medallions guys decent uh talismans and we are good and we are ready to go now guys you'll see the the fight on the screen now and i'll walk you guys through it so it really is as simple as this guys so we run up to the uh the entrance to this final fight final boss battle and well what you want to do guys is simply just skip the uh cutscene but as you skip the cutscene press and hold that run button and you just want to run to the boss's left hand side so you're right the boss is a left and what you will notice straight away is the boss actually doesn't react if you stand right next to her. Now, if you go a little bit too fast, you will actually react, uh, or he will react and, and do you over. But as you can see, you run and stand to his left, and it just does not react. Weirdly enough, yeah or no. So from here, if you got your Terra Magicus, drop it, then just pull out your comments there, lock onto the boss, and just drill. You'll take about half of his, it depends on your FP points, but it should take more or less near half his health off. Um, so you don't really need too many flasks for this, and this is really all we need the FP points for, and it's all what we need the staff for, to be honest. Now we obviously drop in our summon, replaying what we've used in terms of health because of the summon and the FP points. And from here, guys, you just want to run towards the boss. Just run towards the boss, get behind it, and then just basically stomp. Now, I wish I would have recorded one of my cleaner runs, the ones I actually failed at the last part. This was an actual, it wasn't clean at all, guys, but you can see the damage that does. Now I get hit a couple of times, but again, it's all about learning the boss's attacks. It's all about learning and noticing what she's doing. Now there will be a stage where she just does about four or five different attacks in a row. It's all about just running, rolling, dodging. The worst one for me is definitely, it's like, I don't know what it is. It's like she jumps up in midair and she has like three rings around her and she drops them on the floor. That's the worst one, but you can still quite easily avoid it. Now you can see what I'm doing here is, I'm just running towards the back end. I'm just trying to get towards her back end because she's got uh, the aggro's on my mimic, which is the plan. And then she just turned on me. But again, these are, these attacks are easy to actually judge because they're so slow. I'm just, to be honest, I was tired when I recorded this. I'm also old as well, people. So my reactions are going to be nowhere near as good as you younger fellas. Just ain't, ain't the same, man. But you can see. I just, see this attack here. This is the one attack. I just, I just look up. I'm just running sideways, I'm running sideways until I hit invisible walls, but she's still got me. But either way, see, rolling works wonders, simple as that, simple as that. And here I'm just running towards the boss, I'm running towards the boss because I want to get behind her. So that's that's my plan. I notice any attacks coming, I go sideways, like this, and it's barely touch her. See, they, like I said, the attacks are quite easy to avoid. And now because she's still on my mimic tier, and we just stomp, stomp, get them stomps away when you can. Just keep stomping again at one attack. Like I said, this is such an unclean run. You can see that coming a mile away. And I'm just so old, I can't react. But yeah, just stomp away, guys, stomp away. Like I said, this whole frost stomp does serious damage to bosses. Serious damage to bosses. Now, like I said, the, the, the Mimic Tear is taking the damage. That's what we want. The Mimic Tear is taking the damage. And you see, guys. I don't know. It's simple, it's simple as that. I don't know. It's simple as that. The Alden Beast is down. And it really is. Like I said, that could have been way cleaner. It could have been way cleaner if I would have avoided the sword swings. Which I could have seen a mile away. But like I said, I'm just so I'm old and tired, people. I'm old and that is it. It really is that simple. Phase one, you don't even get touched. Phase two, just go behind her as much as you can and stomp with a half a stump. Make sure your Mimic's got that uh, that tank gear on. I mean, you can obviously boost yourself and your Mimic with better talismans than what I'm using. Like I said, I don't really pay attention to them. It's not what my kind of thing. But there we go, guys. And that is how you defeat the last boss relatively straightforward. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more Elden Ring, be sure to subscribe and hopefully, people, I will see you on that next one.